Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Podcast. Today's Friday, September 20th, 2019. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's Thursday night football game and last night's lone game in college football, baseball, WNBA playoffs. Look ahead to the WNBA playoff games of the weekend. Pick week four of college football and the rest of NFL week three. And I have my best bet for you as well. Okay. We're going to start with Thursday Night Football with the Jaguars coming out victorious 20-7 to as the Jaguars are on the board and now are 1-2 and two on the season. Tennessee drops to 1-2. and two. Gardner Minshew, 20-30, of 30, 204 yards and two touchdowns. Marcus Mariota, 23-40, of 40, 304 yards. That was the most unexpiring over 300-yard performance I've seen from somebody in a long time. It, him and Cam Newton in Week 2 on Thursday Night Football, I think were the two most uninspiring 300-yard performances we've had in the season. And then Eli Manning in Week 1, who is now benched, obviously, for Daniel Jones. So, big win for the Jaguars. Much needed win for the Jaguars. And good for Gardner Minshew, who um, put together a couple nice drives and then was conservative later on. Through the game. Leonard Fournette did not have a good game. His stats look good solely because he had that 69 yard run in the fourth quarter later in the, that game. So Fournette didn't have a good game. That one great run masked what was not so good of a game for Fournette. Okay, college football last night. A very interesting game. With Tulane coming out on top by a score of 38 to 31. I had Tulane. I had the over. So a 1 0 start to the week for me, both straight up and side totals. Tulane goes to 3 1 and is 1 0 in the conference. Houston drops to 1 3, drops to 0 1 in the conference. That was just a devastating loss for Dana Holgerson's team. I'm curious to see whether they rebound from it. I'm going to bank on the yes for that. Although, they're probably going to end up like a 7-5 team rather than what I thought in the season or beforehand with 9-3. and They're already at three losses. That's because I thought they'd win this game and I thought they'd upset Washington State. Meanwhile, the quarterback for Tulane, Justin McMillan, 7-20, 186 yards and three touchdowns. So not the best performance from him. They did a lot of running the ball in this game as well. And Jalen McCleskey caught the 53-yard touchdown pass with three seconds to go after a trick play from the Houston, or I'm sorry, from the Tulane offense, and Willie Fritz pulled that off. That was great. And then, obviously, the kind of Hail Mary to uh, to essentially end the game with three seconds left. And then uh, Houston had a chance to potentially tie it with the run back, but that didn't happen. And Tulane gets a monstrous win to kick off conference play. Baseball. Going to go over last night's games and look ahead to tonight. Some very, very, very... Interesting results, some potential death blow results, some potential um, season-changing results for some teams. So without further ado, I'm going to go down the, uh, the list of the results. Braves over the Phillies, 5-4, to four, a much-needed win for the Braves after dropping the first two in this series. 94-60, Phillies 78-73. Mike Soroka the win, Aaron Nola the loss, Mark Melanson the save. The Phillies' tragic number, I believe, is down to seven. Mariners over to Pirates, 65 and 11 innings. Mariners go to 65 and 88. Pittsburgh is 65 and 88 as well. So this could determine draft order potentially here. Brendan Brennan, the win, getting charged with the loss for the Pirates was Clay Holmes, and getting the save for Pittsburgh was Eric Swanson. Or I'm sorry for uh, Seattle. Red Sox over the Giants, 5-4. The Red Sox are 80-72. San Francisco is 74-79. and 
Eduardo Rodriguez, the win. Madison Bumgarner, the loss. Brandon Workman, the save. Brewers over the Padres, 5-1. The they are now alone in the second spot in the wild card in the National League. They're 83-70. and 70. San Diego, 69-84. Freddie Peralta, the win. Joey Lutesi, the loss. Josh Hader gets the save. Yankees over the Angels, 9-1. Clinched their first American League East title. Since 2012, they're 154 on the season. L.A. is 69-84. Masahiro Tanaka to win. Andrew Heaney the loss. There's a Yankee news that I have to get to after the baseball segment's over. Blue Jays over the Orioles, 8-4. Blue Jays, 62-91. Baltimore, 49-104. Anthony K gets his first big league win. Gabriel Noah charged with the loss for Baltimore. Indians over the Tigers, 7-0. Now the Indians are tied with the race for the second wild card in the American League, they're 19-63. The choice 43 and 107. Mike Clevenger to win. Daniel Norris, the loss. Cardinals over the Cubs, 5 to 4 in 10 innings. A very satisfying win for the Cardinals. They probably should have ended it in the ninth, but Carlos Martinez imploded. Then they go to Andrew Miller, and then Andrew Miller gives up a RBI ground out, which that run obviously was charged to Martinez. So the Cubs had a chance to uh, steal this game and perhaps change their season a little bit. This could be a season-changing loss for the Cubs as they're now one back of the Brewers for the second wild card, and their tragic number, I believe, is eight. Chicago's 82 and 71, and St. Louis is 85 and 67. They're very close to clinching the National League Central, which would be a deserving uh, title for them. Andrew Miller to win, Craig Kimbrough to loss, and Giovanni Gallegos gets the, his first save of the year. Twins over the Royals, 8-5. to five. The Twins are close to clinching the American League Central. They are 94-59. and 59. Casey's 56-98. and 98. Getting the win for the Twins was Lewis Thorpe. Getting charged with a loss for the Royals was Jacob Barnes. And Trevor Rogers gets the save. Okay. Today, 220. Cardinals-Cubs. Cubs have a chance to bounce back here and get within a half game of Milwaukee. You have Michael Waka going for the Cardinals against Alec Mills. So, Waka obviously has a shaky history against the Cubs, so maybe the Cubs have a chance to rebound here. I'm not suggesting that yesterday's loss was like a season crusher for them because um, I thought the Mets' season crushing loss was that walk-off loss against the Nationals in which they blew that six-run lead, and uh, they kind of hung around after that, and they're only three back of the... Brewers, so I guess you consider the Mets somewhat still alive in the wildcard race. Their tragic numbers down to seven, as well as the Phillies. So we'll see what happens here, and I think today's a good opportunity for the Cubs to uh, bounce back. Seven o'clock, you have the Phillies at the Indians on ESPN. Big game, both leagues. Drew Smiley, Shane Bieber, Cleveland obviously tied with the Rays for the second wild card now. Rays head off yesterday, so Cleveland took advantage and tied them. Philadelphia took two out of three against the Braves, but lost a somewhat of a heartbreaker against the Braves. Aaron Nola did not step up. He was outpitched by Mike Soroka, who should be in the Rookie of the Year conversation in the National League, but it will be Peter Alonso because... Uh, He's a Met and plays in New York and has 49 homers on the season and will crush Aaron Judge's home run record, her most uh, home runs by a rookie. So, Smiley and Bieber, Indians and Phillies, both leagues are affected here in the wild card chases. If the Phillies get the win and let's say the Brewers lose to whomever they're playing, I have to look at the schedule then they can jump or take advantage and move up a game. Indians, let's see if they win. Maybe the Rays or Oakland loses, and they can uh, take advantage that way. Who do I think will win this game, though? The Cleveland Indians, because they're the better pitcher than Shane Bieber. Shane Bieber's had a great season. I think his ERA is skewed because of a couple bad starts. Notably, he had a bad one against the Yankees back in June at, at home. So, if not for that Yankee start, maybe his ERA is under three on the season. Shane Bieber is better than Drew Smiley, as well as Smiley has pitched at times for Philadelphia this year. Shane Bieber is better than Drew Smiley, and it's not even close. And I think that 
the Indians will get a big-time win on national television tonight against the Philadelphia Phillies. Blue Jays, Yankees. You have Jacob Wasipek and Jay Happ. Obviously, this could be a letdown spot for the Yankees after clinching the division, so I would stay away from them in best bet. Mariners, Orioles. Felix Hernandez going up against Richard Blyer. Looks like that Blyer's going to be the opener for the Orioles today. 7 o'clock as well, Red Sox at the Rays. I think the Red Sox with a loss here will be eliminated from playoff contention. Rick Porcello against Charlie Morton. So a big game for Tampa Bay to uh, um, potentially jump the Indians if Philly beats uh, Cleveland. The White Sox at the Tigers is a meaningless game. You have Dylan Cease against Jordan Zimmerman. Mets-Reds, meaningful for the Mets. They have the race, Jacob DeGrom, going up against Luis Castillo. Battle of Aces in that game. How is Luis Castillo and the Reds such a big underdog at home against DeGrom and the Mets? I know it's DeGrom and everything, but Castillo is good. He's no scrub, so the Mets are no lock tonight whatsoever. This would be a game I think that the Mets would lose. Heck, I'm going to call it right now. I think Cincinnati beats the Mets tonight. I just think that everybody is just assuming the Mets are going to win because of DeGrom. Luis Castillo is one of the better pitchers in the National League, too, and he doesn't get the credit that he deserves. So, bonus pick for you guys tonight. I think the Reds upset the Mets in Cincinnati. All righty. Nationals-Marlins. Nationals obviously trying to hang on to that first wild card spot. They should easily get it done. They're playing the worst team in the league. You have Annabelle Sanchez against Robert Duggar. Giants-Braves at 720. Giants are out of it. Atlanta's trying to clinch the division. Um, Tyler Bean and Mike Fulton Everett. So they can clinch tonight if they get a win here. I think it's a win and a Nats loss, or they could just win and clinch. We'll see. 8 o'clock, Angels Astros. You have Jaime Barria and Zach Ranke. Looks like the Astros are going to get the home field in the American League, barring a weird upset. Because their schedule is easy and the Yankees have failed to beat some bad teams on the stretch, notably against uh, the Blue Jays last weekend, the other day against the Angels, and that ugly walk-off loss against the Detroit Tigers earlier last week. So I think those games, those four games will cost the Yankees home field advantage, although if the Astros don't get it, they're going to be pointing at that walk-off loss against the Orioles and that loss at home against the Tigers if they don't get it. Don't forget that the trait did go in Houston and beat them outright about a few weeks ago. That was such a bad loss for Houston. With Verlander on the mound too, yikes. Pirates, Brewers. Steven Brault and Chase Anderson, the Brewers absolutely need this game badly. So I think they'll get it. You'll see in best bet. Royals, Twins. Eric Scoblin for KC and Randy Dobnak going for the Twins. Twins are very close to clinching the uh, AL Central Division. Um, magic number six. So they probably won't clinch it until next week. ESPN 10 o'clock Rockies Dodgers. So doubleheader on ESPN on a Friday night, which is very rare for them to do in baseball. They do it at the end of the year when... Um, the races are headed to a close that they pick a couple random games in the air on a Friday night. They did that last year and the year before as well. But here um, you have a team that's already clinched its division, but they're playing for home field advantage throughout the playoffs, battling Houston and New York. And um, you have Clayton Kershaw going up against Peter Lambert. Rangers Athletics, A's need these games to clinch the wild card. They need to take advantage of the Rangers who suck. Mike Miner and Mike Fighters. Well, Mike Miner doesn't suck. He's had a pretty good year, but I just think the Rangers suck as a pitching staff as a whole and that Miner and Lynn have overachieved. But anyway, they should be able to take advantage. Fires will bounce back from that horrendous Astro start. Diamondbacks Padres, the Diamondbacks were in it, but they fell out of it, so this is a meaningless game. You have Merrill Kelly going against Eric Lauer. All righty. 
Domingo Herman was placed on administrative leave yesterday, the Yankees pitcher for domestic violence. I do not think he's guilty, although we don't know that for sure yet. But I do not think he's guilty. It sounds like he's not just from hearing the quotes from Aaron Boone and um, the quotes from the Yankees. It doesn't sound pretty. And obviously Buster only reported about an hour ago saying that Domingo Herman out for the rest of the season in the playoffs, even though they're still investigating the situation. This is a big loss for the Yankees. There's no other way to put around it. Yes, they've thrived without some key contributors all year, but Herman was one of those key contributors that helped them overachieve this year when their key players were injured. The good news for the Yankees is that Luis Severino is back, and he looked pretty solid against the Angels. Granted, the Angels didn't have Mike Trout, but his velocity was there, and that's a very good sign for the Yankees. And obviously, Luis Severino at his best is better than Domingo Herman. And I do think Herman's a, losing Herman's a big deal. He was supposed to be the middle guy in games that they could have gone with an opener in. And they're exploring this grand plan. And so you saw it the other day with CC Sabathia. They, he went for two in, inning, in the third innings and then Herman followed. You saw that twice, once against the Tigers and once against the Angels the other day. And obviously he's lost for the year. Maybe they try somebody else in that role, like Jonathan Lewisica, who's really pitched pretty well lately. And then um, Jordan Montgomery, if he's ready to go, and if he rebounds from his uh, disappointing first game back, then maybe he can be in that role. This isn't a death blow for the Yankees. This isn't Aaron Judge hurting his oblique again. This isn't um, Derek Jeter breaking his ankle in 2012. But this is a pretty significant loss for the Yankees pitching staff. That's for sure. Do I think it will cost them a series against the Astros? Probably not. Because if they um, lose a series to the Astros, it will be because um, other guys haven't stepped up. Like James Paxton and Masahiro Tanaka and Severino. And they would be outpitched by Verlander, Cole, and Granke. That's why they would lose a series to the Astros. But you never know. I think the Astros are probably the team to beat in the American League. But if Severino's right... Tanaka's right, and Paxton is pitching as well as he has, I think it's a coin flip. I really, really do. Because Paxton, Severino, and Tanaka are the best three pitchers on the Yankees when everybody's healthy. And maybe I'm a little too optimistic about the Yankees' chances, but I really like their bullpen. Their offense is among one of the best in the game. And... They should make it to the ALCS regardless of this Domingo Herman situation. But it won't be easy if they have to face somebody that um, can give them fits in the first round like the Athletics or even Tampa Bay if Tampa Bay's pitching is fully healthy. I think that those two teams can give them fits. I'm not big on the Twins. To me, that's just an offensive juggernaut that took advantage of tanking Tigers, tanking Royals, tanking White Sox, and um, injury-riddled Indians all season. So um, I'm not the biggest person that's on the Twins. So I feel like that's a team that's vulnerable come playoff time. So we'll see how this plays out for the Yankees as October rolls around. WNBA. There are a few games to go over from yesterday and look ahead to Sunday's playoff games. Sun over the Sparks, 94-68. to Sun are up 2-0. Looks like the Sun will probably win this series. They're the better team. I whiffed on this pick. I'm the moron that bet on Derek Fisher. Um, John Quill Jones had 27 points for Connecticut to go with 13 rebounds. Neko Gumake had 18-7 and seven for the Sparks. Chelsea Gray had 10. Candace Parker only had 3. That's really bad that she had such a poor game. And Chine Gumake had 10 off the bench, so a better game for her. Alyssa Thomas had 12 and 13 boards. Williams from 
Connecticut at 25, 6 and 6. So a great game for her. Mystics over the Aces, 103-91. So the Mystics actually get the cover in this game. Emma Messiman at 30 points for the Mystics to go with six boards and four assists. Elena Deladon, who was just named MVP yesterday, 14 points, 10 boards. Cloudhead, 18 with 11 assists. And then for Vegas, Liz Cambage had 23 and 10. Kelsey Plum had 19 with 6 boards and 10 assists. Jackie Young had 13. So, a little better for um, Jackie Young, but um, Kayla McBride and Aja Wilson did not step up their games, and that's what ultimately come back to bite them here. I do think that um, both um, teams that are down 2-0 right now have a chance to uh, send this back to Game 5. The first game on Sunday evening at ESPN2, you have the Mystics at the Aces from Vegas. I actually think the Aces at home will come out and win. I'm just going to say that. I think the Mystics will be a four-point road favorite because they're favored by Ted in each of these first two games. And normally you take three points for home field advantage, and so it would have to go six the other way. So I think the Aces would cover my projected spread of four, and they'll win this outright. So um, give me the Aces in a close competitive game. And then Sun at the Sparks, 7 o'clock ESPN 2. I think the Sparks are going to come out and win too. They'll be favored unlike the Sun were. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, the Mystics are on the road. The Sun were actually only favored by a point and a half in the second game. So, the Sparks, on paper, be favored in a neutral. And the Sparks, I think, would be like a three or four point home favorite here. And I think they'll come out and win. And perhaps cover my projected number of three and a half for the Sparks at home against the Sun. So... Give me the two teams that are trailing 2-0 to uh, come out at home and uh, get on the board in their respective series is with the Aces and the Sparks. College football, week number four, the picks. So there's some interesting games on the board for the weekend. And without further ado, here we go. We'll start tonight. There's three games on the board for tonight. You have at 8 o'clock, Florida International at Louisiana Tech. Louisiana Tech is a seven-point favorite. The over-under is 51 and a half. I initially had L Tech at nine when I uh, bet it. It's down to seven. I'm going to take Louisiana and the Tech obviously to win the game, and I think they'll cover the, the seven. I think it's a double-digit win for the Bulldogs, who are a better team than FIU. So a much-needed win for La Tech here as they win their conference opener, and they'll cover the seven. Utah at USC at nine o'clock. On Fox Sports 1, Utah's laying 3.5. The over-under is 52. Upset alert. I am taking the Trojans. Not only to cover the 3.5, but to win the game outright. They're plus 148 on the money line. I think Kelvin Slovis bounces back. And I think that Utah is in a trap game here. So give me the Trojans here as a home underdog. And the Trojans always thrive when they're a dog. There's something about USC when they're an underdog at home. I think they get it done here. Also at 9 o'clock, you have Air Force at Boise State. Boise State's favored by 7. The over-under is 50, 55. I almost said 56. I'm taking Boise to win. I think they cover the 7 points. I think Boise's a better team than Air Force. I think Air Force was lucky to win against Colorado because that game went to overtime. Colorado was the better team, but Air Force lucked out. So... Give me Boise State the win by double digits, and I think this is a letdown for Air Force after the big win against Colorado. Saturday, you have Tennessee at Florida. Florida's laying 14. The over-under is 49. I am going to take the Gators to win the game, but my play on the game is under 49. 
Florida obviously lost Felipe Franks for the year. That's a loss, but I don't think that's as big as of a loss as people are making it out to be because I'm not the biggest fan of Felipe Franks. I mentioned that on my podcast last week. Kentucky, they did a nice job hanging around with, uh, with Florida last week. But Tennessee's not a good team. I'm sorry. Tennessee's just not good. I initially bet this number at 44. I went all the way up to 49. I just think that um, it went up because people know that Tennessee's defense stinks. But you know whose defense is good? The Florida Gators. You know whose offense stinks? The Tennessee Vols. So give me the under in this game with, at 49. And obviously the Gators winning the game. Michigan at Wisconsin from Madison. Wisconsin's laying 3.5. The over-under is 44.5. Tough game to pick here, guys. Very tough. I think the Badgers get a signature home win here against Jim Harbaugh's team. I think that their offense still isn't very good. They have some key injuries on offense. I'm talking about Michigan. Meanwhile, Wisconsin has the best player on the field. In Jonathan Taylor. But. I'm going to play the under here. It's at 44 and a half. I bet it at 46. And it went down a couple points. So the play here is. Wisconsin to win the game. Under 44 and a half. I think. Wisconsin wins this game. Something like. 20 to 16 or something like that. So they barely cover. And the under easily hits. UL Monroe at Iowa State. Iowa State's laying 18 and a half. The over-under is 55 and a half. Another under I'm going to take here. 55 and a half. I bet it at 57 and it went down a point and a half. I just think that Iowa State's a good defensive football team. Their offense to me is a little shaky. Yeah, UL Monroe is very good offensively, but I just think that Iowa State's defense is much better than Florida State's defense. And I think that this is an under, and I think the Cyclones win this game something like, let's say like 33 to 17. And that adds up to 50, which would work for the under. UConn at Indiana. Indiana's laying 27. The over-under is 56 and a half. I am taking the Hoosiers to win and cover. I think UConn sucks. They're the worst team in the country, perhaps. And Indiana, prime bounce back spot after a dismal loss against Ohio State in a game where many people thought that they'd cover in. But this screams bounce back for the Hoosiers. So give me them to cover the 27 half, and I think they win this game by 31. LSU at Vanderbilt. LSU's laying 24. The over-under is 62 and a half. I'm going to say that LSU wins the game. And I think they cover the 24. I just think they're a much better team than Vanderbilt. Joe Burrow is on a nice run. People like him to win the Heisman this year. After that signature performance at Texas. Against the defense that many people think is improved. So give me LSU to win and cover the 24, and I think they win by 30. Cal at Ole Miss. Ole Miss is laying 2.5. The over-under is 41.5. My favorite pick of the whole week. I'm laying the 2.5 with Ole Miss. This is a lock, no-brainer. My favorite bet of the entire week. I learned my lesson from two weeks ago. I stupidly took favored, or I'm sorry, ranked Syracuse as an underdog against unranked Maryland. That blew up in my face. I'm not getting blown up in the face again. Give me Ole Miss minus two and a half, and I think they win this game like 30 to 13 or something like that. So give me Ole Miss to win in the cover and to uh, show that they're not a bad team this year and Cal will lose their ranking just like Syracuse did when they went to Maryland a few weeks ago. And that is obviously one of my best five plays brought to you by DraftKings. Western Michigan at Syracuse. Syracuse is only favored by four and a half. The over-under is 66 and a half. 
I had Syracuse at minus six and a half when I bet it. It went down two points. Everyone and their brother loves Western Michigan this week. Western Michigan's a good MAC team. I get it. But, like, how is this line four and a half? That line stinks. So everybody is taking Western Michigan. I was caught in this trap last week with Wake Forest and North Carolina inside the bet North Carolina as a road underdog to win outright. That blew up in my face. I'm not letting that blow up in my face again. Tommy DeVito leads Syracuse to a win, and I think Syracuse covers the four and a half. Michigan State at Northwestern. Northwestern's getting nine and a half. The over-under is 38. I'm taking Northwestern not only to cover the nine and a half, but I'm taking them to win outright. I think that this screams classic Northwestern upset. This happens every single season to Northwestern. They lose to an inferior team at some point, and they beat a superior team on paper. And I think that they are going to come out and really put up a good performance led by Hunter Johnson and Pat Fitzgerald shows everybody again why he's such a masterful underdog head coach. So Northwestern plus 9.5 and and they're plus 290 on the money line. I obviously think they win the game outright. Southern Miss at Alabama. Alabama is laying a whopping 38.5. The over under is 61.5. I'm taking the over here. I bet it at 59.5. It's up to 61.5, and I'd still take it. I think Bama could get to 50, and I think Southern Miss can get to 17, and that would be your over. Alon at Wake Forest. Wake Forest is laying 27.5. No over-under shown. I'm going to take Wake minus the 27.5. I think that they're the better team than Alon. Alon's not a that great of a FCS team. So I'm going to take Wake Forest to cover here the number, and I think they win by, like, 35. Morgan State at Army. Morgan State is getting 49 points. I obviously think Army's going to win the game. I just think Morgan State covers. That's too big of a number for me. Army's a good team, don't get me wrong. But Army's not that good offensively, and they're a team that uh, is very round on running the ball, and they like to milk the clock. So I think Army can win this game like 44 to nothing. So that would qualify as a Morgan State cover. So I initially got it at 49 and a half and went down to 49. So Army obviously wins the game, but Morgan State covers the 49. Next up you have Coastal Carolina and UMass. UMass is getting 16 and a half. The over-under is 61 and a half. Coastal Carolina is obviously going to win this game. They're the much better team. They really um, let me down in week one and did me a favor in week two. I think they'll do me yet another favor here again to win the game on the field against a bad UMass team. I'm taking the under here at 61 and a half. I bet it at 62 and went down a half point. I just think that UMass sucks offensively, although they suck defensively too. So I can see Coastal Carolina winning this game like 40-17, to 17, and that would still qualify as an under. Next up is Ohio hosting UL Lafayette. Ohio's laying only two points. The over-under is 67.5. A lot of people love UL Lafayette in this spot to win it outright on the field. UL Lafayette is a good team in the Sun Belt this year, but they're not as good as Ohio. Come on. I love Ohio in this spot. Laying the two. I got it at three and a half. It went down to two. I think Ohio is going to win this game by double digits. Next up is Troy at Akron. Akron is getting 17 and a half. The over-under is 56 and a half. I think Troy bounces back and gets the win here, but I think Akron covers the 17 and a half. I just think that that's a big number for Troy to uh, cover on the road, especially after losing to Southern Miss at home last week. I just think they get backdoored and Troy wins like 40 to 25 or something like that. Eastern Michigan at Central Connecticut. Eastern Michigan's laying 33. 
And I think here that Eastern will win. And I'm going to say that uh, Central Connecticut covers because Eastern Michigan coming off that big win. I can see a slow start for them here. So I'm going to say that Eastern Michigan wins by like 24 points against Central Connecticut. Next up, you have Auburn at Texas A&M. A&M's laying 3.5. The over-under is 47.5. I absolutely love the over. I got it at 50. It dropped to 47.5. I love it. I think both teams get to perhaps 30 points in this game. And even if Texas A&M gets the 30 and Auburn gets the 20, that's an over. And I think that 30 to 20 could be a realistic final score. And I obviously think that Texas a and is going to win the game. They'll probably cover two, but I love the over here because I think the hook is open, and I wouldn't be surprised really if a and won 30-27 to and Auburn got backdoored, or Auburn backdoors a and So I'm going to say over 47.5 is my play here, although the Aggies obviously win the game on the field. Washington at BYU, the over-under is 51. I'm going to take Washington to win the game on the field. A lot of people like BYU as a dog yet again against the Pac-12 team. But I like the over here. I got it at 49. It's up to 51. I think that both teams are going to score. BYU's offense showed me something last week, although USC's defense is not the best. Washington's defense is not very good either. And I think that both teams are going to score a lot. I won't be surprised if both teams get to 30. Although, obviously, I think Washington will win the game over the Cougars of BYU. UCF at Pitt. UCF's laying 11, the over-under 16.5. I think UCF wins the game on the field, but I think Pitt covers the 11. I just think that UCF is bound to have a not-so-great performance. They're on the road against a Pitt team that showed me something last week against Penn State. Granted, their coach cost them a chance to win that game by uh, making some dumb decisions down the stretch that are well documented. So I think Pitt will stay inside the number, although UCF wins. I'm going to say that UCF wins by a score of like 30 to 23. That would qualify as a Pitt cover. Miami of Ohio at Ohio State. Ohio State's laying 39. The over-under is 56.5. I got Ohio State minus 40. I'll take them at minus 39. They're a much better team than Miami of Ohio, and they're going to cream them. That's it. That's all I have for you. UAB at South Alabama. UAB is laying 11. The over-under is 49. I think UAB will win the game on the field. And I think that they will cover the 11 here. I just think that they're a much better team than South Alabama. I got it at minus 10. It went up to 11. I think they win this game by 17 on their home field. And granted, UAB may not be as good as they were, but I just think South Alabama is really bad. SMU at TCU. TCU is laying 8.5. The over-under is 55. I love TCU here to win and cover. They're a very good team. I got them at 9.5 and, and went down to 8.5. There are some people that like SMU. Maybe because it's in-state rival. I get it. But TCU is just better than SMU. And I think TCU um, is now ranked. And they want to prove people that they belong in the ranking. So give me TCU. Minus 8.5 as they uh, get ready to um, go in the Pac-12 play. Or, I'm sorry, Big 12 play within the next few weeks. Bowling Green at Kent State. Kent State's laying a whopping 11 and a half. The over-under is 62 and a half. I think that Kent State will win the game, but I like the under 62 and a half. I just don't think these teams are very good offensively. Even a 30 to 10 final score or 30 to 20 final score can clinch me the under. So give me Kent State to win on the field. Under 62 and a half is the play. Appalachian State at North Carolina. The Tar Heels are laying 2.5. The over-under is 58. 
This is a similar situation that Carolina was in a week ago, except as the underdog that everybody loved, and it came back and bit me in the ass. Mac Brown better not bite me in the ass again this time as a favorite, so give me North Carolina minus the two and a half. They're a better team than perceived. I love Appalachian State as a underdog in a lot of different spots, but not here. Sorry. I'm going to take Carolina to win by a touchdown. Wyoming at Tulsa. Tulsa's laying 3.5. The over-under's 45. Give me Wyoming getting the 3.5, and, and I think they win the game outright. Plus 145 on the money line. I just think Wyoming's a better team than Tulsa. They'll play defense, and I think that it'll show in this game. And I don't think Tulsa is a good team either. Arguably the second-worst team in the AAC this year. Temple at Buffalo. Temple's laying 14. The over-under's 51. I love Buffalo getting the 14. Just like last week in Temple spot that a lot of people love Temple getting the points. But I'm learning my lesson here a little bit. I'm fading Temple here as I'm taking Buffalo getting the 14. They're home. Granted, this isn't Buffalo from last year. But they should not be a 14-point underdog to Temple. Like, that's just ridiculous to me. I think there's a chance that Buffalo wins the game on the field. But I'm going to say a Temple wins, but it's closer than the line. So give me Buffalo getting 14 at home against Temple. Louisville at Florida State. Florida State's laying 6.5. The over under 6.5. I'm taking the over. Florida State overs are, like, automatic for me, although it didn't cash me last week. It was at 59.5, it's up to 60.5, and, and I love it. And I think that both teams can get the 30 in this game. Louisville's defense is more Swiss cheese than Virginia's defense. So I can see Florida State scoring some more points. I think Louisville will put up some points too, as they're a team that has played better since losing at home to Notre Dame on that first Monday night of the season. Next up, you have South Carolina at Missouri. Missouri's laying 90 over under 61 and a half. Tough play here. Tough call. I'm going to say over 61 and a half. It was at 64. And dropped to 61. So I'm going to take the over 61 and a half. I think both teams get the 30. I like South Carolina's offense better without Jake Bentley. And Missouri's offense is obviously very good with um, Kelly Bryant at quarterback. So Missouri wins the game on the field, but the play here is over 61 and a half. Kentucky and Mississippi State. Kentucky's getting 60 over under is 47 and a half. This was one of the tougher plays for me in the week, too. I think Kentucky has a chance to win this game outright. I'm not in love with what I've seen from the Bulldogs yet. And Tommy Stevens isn't healthy. I'm going to say under 47 and a half. Tommy Stevens, like I said, isn't healthy. Kentucky's missing their starting quarterback. So I'm going to say that this is a 23-20 ball game. I just... um could go either way. I'll take the Bulldogs at home. I don't feel good about it straight up, but the play here is under 47 and a half. Central Michigan at Miami. Miami's laying 29 and a half. The over under is 48. I'm going to take the Hurricanes obviously to win on the field, but my play here is the over 48. I think Miami can cover it by themselves. Central Michigan doesn't play a lick of defense and I think that Miami will put up their fair share of points. Although Central Michigan's a team that can score, as we saw last week. But I just think that the over's a no-brainer play here. And like I said, I think there's a chance that the Hurricanes do this by themselves. So, again, give me over 48 in Central Michigan, Miami. Next up, you have West Virginia at Kansas. West Virginia's laying 4.5. The over-under is 48.5. I love the Mountaineers laying 4.5. This is a letdown spot for Kansas after their big win to end that horrendous losing streak they had against Power 5 teams on the road when they went up to uh, Boston College and beat the living shit out of them. I think West Virginia's going to win this game by double digits. I like what I saw a week ago against North Carolina State. It looked like that their offense was finally getting into rhythm. 
And one of the main reasons why I thought they could be a surprise Big 12 team this year, along with Kansas State. And I don't think Texas Tech's a surprise team, as we saw that in their game against Arizona a week ago. But it looks like the West Virginia and Kansas State are your surprise Big 12 teams this year that could potentially make a bowl game. I thought West Virginia was going to be one of those teams before the season. And now I feel that Kansas is one of those teams. And I now I obviously think that I was right about West Virginia after they upset NC State last week. So give me West Virginia minus the four and a half. Like I said, they'll win this game by double digits. And we'll be reminded yet again that Kansas still has a long way to go before they can make some noise in the Big 12. New Mexico State at New Mexico. New Mexico's laying five. The over-under is 70. I'm going to take the under here. I just think that that's a very high number for this game. New Mexico's a team that I can see making a few stops. I think they win this game like 38-20, to 20 and that would qualify for me as an under. You have... FAU hosting Wagner. FAU is minus 35, and I think they wouldn't cover that game. Wagner's not a very good FCS team out there from Staten Island, but I think that FAU is a very good team in Conference USA. I think they win this game by 40. So give me FAU minus the 35. William & Mary at East Carolina. East Carolina's laying 12. I think East Carolina wins and covers, and we'll finally see a good game from the Pirates. Next up, you have Liberty hosting Hampton. Liberty's laying 26.5 points. I think they win and cover, and I think that Hugh Freeze's team will put up a number against Hampton. Next up, you have Oregon at Stanford. Oregon's laying 10. The over-under is 57.5. Tough one for me here because Stanford is such a big underdog in this spot. So it seemed very obvious to take them based on reputation and based on that they have a coaching advantage with David Shaw over Mario Cristobal. But Oregon has the talent edge right now as they have Justin Herbert at quarterback they have a great defense which they have the number one recruit on um I forget his name but I know his last name is Thibodeau with an X at the end so for this play granted Oregon's defense is a little bit improved I like the over here I just think that Oregon's going to score a lot of points. And I think that Stanford will show up at home. And I don't know if they'll win the game. I don't think they'll win the game. I think Oregon's going to win, obviously. But I think Stanford will show a little something here after a disastrous loss against UCF. KJ Costello, second game back. So I'm going to say over 57.5 as the play. Initially got it at 54. It went up to 57.5. So give me the over in the Oregon-Stanford game with the Ducks winning on the field. Baylor at Rice. Baylor's laying 26.5. The over-under is 58. I'm taking Baylor to win the game. I love over 58. This is one of my best plays of the week. Along with Northwestern, Ole Miss, the Auburn A&M over, and West Virginia's laying four and a half. Those are my other four best plays. This is my fifth best play. Over 58. Baylor's going to cover that by themselves, just like Texas nearly did last week against the same Rice team. So give me the over in Baylor-Rice, and I think that Baylor can win this game like 60-10. to 10. Southern Illinois at Arkansas State. Arkansas State is laying 23. The over-under is 62. I'm going to take Arkansas State to cover the 23. Do I feel good about it? No. But they're just a better team on the field, and I think they win by 30 against an FCS school in Southern Illinois. Georgia State at Texas State. Texas State's laying 3D over under 63.5. 
I think the wrong team's favored here, and I love Georgia State getting three, plus 130 on the money line to win the game outright. So give me Georgia State plus three and to win the game on the field. It went down from three and a half, by the way. Ball State at NC State. NC State's laying 19. The over-under is 58 and a half. I'm going to take the Wolf Pack to cover to 19. I think they bounced back from last week's loss against West Virginia, and I don't think Ball State's a good team either. Old Dominion at Virginia. Virginia's laying 28 and a half. The over-under is 46. I initially got this under at 51 and a half. I still think the under happens. I think there's a chance Virginia wins this game like 35 to 7. So give me under 46 as my play with obviously the Cavs winning the game. Next up, you got the Cowboys of Oklahoma State at the Longhorns of Texas. Texas is laying 6.5. The, the over under is 72. Tough here. Very, very tough. I'm going to say over 72 is my play. I got it at 73. It dropped the point. There's this narrative out there that Oklahoma State's defense has improved. I need to see it against a good offense like Texas. I think this screams shootout, 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 classic Big 12, 45-40 final. So give me Texas to win the game over 72. And I think that over can be done midway through the third quarter, maybe. Charlotte at Clemson. Clemson's laying 41 and a half. The over-under is 60 and a half. I like the over in this game because Charlotte, I think, the team will can get some garbage time points against Clemson once Clemson starts to sit some guys prior to when they start conference play for good. So give me over 60 and a half with obviously the Tigers winning the game on the field. Next up, you have UTSA and North Texas. North Texas is laying 19. The over-under is 58. Give me North Texas to win. I think they cover the 19. They are a better team than UTSA. And my actual play here is over 58, by the way. Although I think North Texas will cover. I feel much better about the over. I think North Texas' offense will bounce back in a big way after seeing a couple good defenses with Cal. And they played somebody else good defensively. Can't think of who on top of my head. So give me North Texas here to win. And I like them over 58. Next up is San Jose State at Arkansas. Arkansas is laying 21. The over-under is 16 and a half. I'm taking Arkansas minus the 21 here. I just think they're a much better team than San Jose State. San Jose State is one of the worst five teams in college football. So give me Arkansas State to win here, and I think they win this game by 30-plus. Next up, you have Notre Dame at Georgia. Georgia laying 14 and a half. The over-under is 57 and a half. Game days in town. I called it on last week's podcast. That game day would be here in Athens. Tough play here. Notre Dame getting to 14 and a half is enticing because of the hook. And I said that about Florida State, Virginia on last week's podcast. And I blew an opportunity to take the hook. But I like the over 57 and a half. I got it at 15 and a half and went up to 57 and a half. I think that it's going to be a shootout. Jake Fromm's going to show off. Ian Book will show off and make a little bit of a Heisman case here on the road, even though it's a night game at Athens. So I'm going to say that the game will be entertaining and there's going to be some points where Notre Dame is going to like creep back in it and people are going to get excited. And there's going to be times where Georgia pulls away and be like, up, oh, it's over. So I think that this is like a 35-24 to 24 Georgia win. And that would obviously qualify for the over. So give me Georgia to win on the field over 57.5. Nevada at UTEP. UTEP is getting 14. The over is 52.5. I love Nevada and the points here because they're just simply a better team than UTEP. UTEP is one of the worst teams in college football. So give me Nevada, minus 14. I think they win this game by 27 points. Nebraska at Illinois. Illinois is getting 13.5. The over-under is 62.5. Trap game alert. Trap game alert. Nebraska plays at home against Ohio State next week. Illinois coming off a dreadful home loss against Eastern Michigan. They are obviously looking ahead to this spot. 
I think this game's going to be very competitive. I think there's going to be spots in this game where people are going to say, hey, Illinois has a chance. I think both teams have good offenses. Yes, I did just say Illinois is a good offense. They have shown that in these first couple games with the rally against Eastern Michigan, and they ultimately lost on a field goal to Eastern Michigan, so they could have potentially stolen that game from Eastern Michigan. But my play on this game, over 62.5. I think this final score is going to be similar to the one in the Indiana-Eastern Michigan game, like a 34 31 type of game. Maybe it's 37-30. But I love the over in this game. I just think that Illinois will hang around and hang around. Nebraska pulls away late, but obviously this is a trap game as they are indeed looking ahead to Ohio State next week when the Buckeyes come to Lincoln. Next up is Colorado. At Arizona State, Arizona State's laying 8.5, the over-under's 49. This line is fishy, and I think Colorado covers the 8.5. And And guess what? I think they're going to win this game outright on the field. They're plus 260 on the money line. I think this is a letdown spot for Arizona State, who got that big win against Sparty a week ago. This screams letdown, and I think Colorado bounces back from a disappointing loss against Air Force, and the steals this game here on the road. So give me Colorado, plus 8.5 against the spread, and plus 260 on the money line. Next up is Fresno State hosting Sacramento State. Fresno's laying 22.5. I think Fresno wins, and Fresno covers. And I had Fresno at minus 24 and a half. It, for some reason, dropped two points. So, give me, right now, Fresno State minus 22 and a half. And they get a much important, much needed victory. Toledo at Colorado State. Toledo's laying 90 over under is 66. I absolutely love the over in this game. I think both teams are going to score and score and score. Colorado State is a bad defensive team. Toledo's a good offensive team. And Colorado State is not a bad offensive team. But they just think defensively, as I just mentioned. So I absolutely love the over. And I think this is a game where both teams can potentially get into the 40s. So give me the over in the Toledo-Colorado State game. And I think Toledo wins on the field. Utah State at San Diego State. San Diego State's getting 3.5. The over-under is 54.5. One of my favorite underdogs of the weekend. I love San Diego State getting 3.5. They're plus 143 on the money line. They'll win this game outright. And I just think people are overrating Utah State a little bit because of Jordan Love. And Jordan Love's a good quarterback, don't get me wrong. But San Diego State's a better team than Utah State. And the wrong team is favored in this game. So give me San Diego State getting the 3.5. They'll win this game outright. Plus 143 on the money line, too. UCLA at Washington State. Wazoo's laying 18 and a half. The over-under is 58 and a half. I love Wazoo to cover that big number. UCLA looks like a team that's quit on Chip Kelly. And I think there's a chance that Chip Kelly's out of a job again come December. So give me Wazoo laying 18 and a half. And I think that they're really going to show people that last year was no fluke. So give me minus 18 and a half with the Huskies here at home against UCLA. Last but not least, you have Hawaii at Central Arkansas. I'm sorry, other way around. Central Arkansas hosting Hawaii. Hawaii's laying 14. I think Hawaii wins and covers the point spread. They're just a better team than Central Arkansas. I'm dying to know what the over-under is, but it's not posted. Or else I bet the over, because I think Hawaii's a good offensive team and better than what it showed against Washington. So give me Hawaii minus 14 against Central Arkansas. Now a flip over to the NFL. Last night, obviously, was a winner. I took the Jaguars, and they did me a favor. So, without further ado, here we go. First up, you have the New York Jets at the New England Patriots. The Jets are getting 22 with their third-string quarterback, Luke Falk. 
and the over-under is 43 and a half. I think the Patriots obviously win the game on the football field, but I'm going to say under 43 and a half because I just think the Jets' offense is so pathetic, and I don't think that Bilicek wants to really run the score again like he did a week ago against the Dolphins. So give me the Patriots to um, win the game, but under 43 and a half to play. I have the Patriots winning this game 34 to 6. The Lions are at the Eagles. The Eagles are getting 6. The over under is 45 and a half. I'm sorry, the Lions are getting 6. I'm going to say that the Lions cover the point spread here, but Philadelphia wins the game. But plus 6 isn't my play because I think that could be a push. I like under 45 better. I just think that the Eagles have a lot of injuries offensively and now showing this game. The Lions' defense isn't terrible, as it's shown the first two weeks. They did a good job against Phillip Rivers and company in Week 2 and did a good job through the first three quarters of the Arizona Cardinals and Kyler Murray in their first game. So I'm going to say the Eagles win this game 20-16, to which would mean an under 45. Denver Broncos at the Green Bay Packers. Denver's getting 7.5. The over-under is 43. Both of these offenses have struggled for the first two weeks of the season. Aaron Rodgers doesn't look right. Joe Flacco looks washed up. So I'm going to take under 43 here. And I think the Packers win this game 24-16 to because of Lambeau Field. And I think that defense will make some big stops against Joe Flacco in that offense. Buffalo hosts Cincinnati. Buffalo's laying six. The over-under is 43.5. It was just announced that Devin Singletary will miss the game due to injury. That's a loss for the Bills' offense. But I don't think it'll matter here. I think the Bengals are the second-worst team in the NFL. And I like the Bills to cover the six. And Buffalo will win the game 27-13 to as Josh Allen puts up another fine performance. Oakland at Minnesota. Minnesota's laying 9. The over-under is 43.5. I think the, this screams Vikings blowout victory. They win this game 30-13. to Kirk Cousins bounces back. He'll feast on that Raiders secondary and pass it along to uh, Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen and Kyle Rudolph. Dalvin Cook will have a big game. So give me the Vikings minus 9 and they'll win the game 30-13. Baltimore is at Kansas City. Baltimore's getting five and a half. The over under is fifty two and a half. This game was played last year, if you guys remember, and the Ravens forced them to go to overtime, or the Chiefs came back against the Ravens and forced overtime and won the game in overtime. Ravens covered the six and a half point spread. It's down to five and a half this year because people are noticing the improvement of the Ravens and saw in week one that the Chiefs secondary could be vulnerable. I'm going to say that the Kansas City Chiefs win the game 31-27. to My play here is over 52.5. My total comes out to 58 with my projected final score. So give me the over 52.5 with the Ravens Chiefs. Miami at Dallas. Dallas is laying 22.5. The over under is 47.5. The Cowboys will obviously win this football game. They're a much better team than the Dolphins. But I'm going to say under 47.5. I think that Dallas will put up a number in the first half and then they milk a lot of clock and keep giving it to Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard in the second half. So I think the Cowboys win this game 35-10 to 10, despite the fact that Josh Rosen is starting for the Dolphins instead of Minka Fitzpatrick. And maybe the Dolphins get a lift here offensively with Rosen. But I don't know. Their offense stinks regardless of who's at quarterback. Falcons at the Colts. The Colts are laying a point. The over-under is 47. I am taking the Colts here to win and cover 24-20. to I just think that the Colts will come out and play well in their home opener. And I think that Jacoby Brissett will have a nice game. T.Y. Hilton will have a nice game. I think the Falcons will hang around in this game, but I just think the, the Colts have more talent. And I just think that the Colts' offensive line will dominate the Falcons' pass rush. So give me the Colts 24-20, and the Colts will obviously cover the one. 
Four o'clock set, the Giants at the Buccaneers. The Giants are getting six. The over-under is 47 and a half. Daniel Jones making his regular season Giants NFL debut against Jameis Winston and the Bucks. The Bucks coming off that big win on Thursday Night Football against the Panthers. But as I said throughout the week, I think that was more about the Panthers and how vulnerable they are than about the Bucks. Jameis Winston's a turnover machine. Yes, the Bucks' defense has improved, but what did I just say? Cam Newton's not healthy. If that was healthy, Cam Newton, the Panthers win that game going away. I'm taking the New York Football Giants to win the game outright. They're getting six. This scares me a lot because the Giants' defense is horrific, so that's why the over is an enticing play. But give me the New York Football Giants on the road, and I think they win this game by a score of 26-20, to 20, led by new quarterback Daniel Jones. So, plus 220 on the money line. I think the Giants win this game outright, although it will be a shootout throughout the game. Panthers, Cardinals. Cardinals laying two and a half. The over-under is 45. Another rookie gets his first win here, and that's Kyler Murray in the Cardinals. I liked it a lot better when they were getting two and a half, but they're now giving two and a half because it looks like Cam Newton's not going to play. So, that obviously moves the point spread four points towards the Cardinals, and I think they win this game. And I think they cover the two and a half. So give me Arizona minus two and a half. And the over is a good play too. It's at 45 because I think that Carolina's defense is a little vulnerable as we saw in that Bucks game. And obviously maybe with Kyle Allen at quarterback for the Panthers, maybe they'll score some points. Not to suggest he's better than Cam Newton, healthy Cam Newton, but uh, maybe McCaffrey has a big game. I can see that happening. So the over's enticing too, but I like the minus two and a half better for the Cardinals. The 49ers are hosting the Steelers. The 49ers are laying six and a half. The over-under is 44. This is the third game in a row where I'm picking a rookie quarterback to win his first game. And that is Mason Rudolph of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I just think that the 49ers, they're not a horrible team. But I just think that the Steelers will be a team that's going to be energized. There's going to be a lot of Steeler fans in the building, even though the 49ers have a nice fan base. I think there's going to be Steeler fans in that building. They're going to be rooting on the Steelers. You're going to be seeing terrible towels everywhere in San Francisco. So I think the Steelers will have a little bit of a weird home field advantage here. I think Mason Rudolph will put up a good game. Juju Smith-Schuster will have a good game. James Conner will have a good game. They're your new triplets for this year. I said last week that your new triplets were Roethlisberger, Conner, and Smith-Schuster, but it's obviously Rudolph, Smith-Schuster, and Conner. So give me the Steelers, get in 6.5. They'll win the game outright. They're plus 235 on the money line, and I can't wait to play a money line parlay with them, the Giants, and one more underdog I'm going to pick here. You'll see who in a minute. Texans at the Chargers. Chargers laying 3D over unders 49. Oh, by the way, I have 27 24 Steelers as my final score. I think that the Steeler kicker wins it at the end for a field goal. I think it's going to be a dramatic win for Pittsburgh. So Houston at the Chargers. Chargers laying 3 over under 49. I think the Chargers will win the game because they're home and I think their offense will bounce back. You know who else's offense I think will bounce back? The Houston Texans who put up a grand total of 13 points against the Jaguars. And the Jaguars' defense is good. Maybe they uh, just ran into the Mahomes machine in week one. That defense is actually pretty good. So my play here is over 49. I think that the Chargers will win this game 30-27. to That would mean a push, but you know what that means more importantly? The over 49, and I think that over is done maybe at the start of the fourth quarter. So give me the Chargers to win the game on the football field over 49. Saints at the Seahawks. The Seahawks are four and a half. The over-under is 45. I love the Seahawks here at home. 
The Seahawks, to me, are not a very good team. They're fraudulent at 2-0. and Just like there's a couple other fraudulent 2 like the 49ers and the Packers. And arguably the Bills, too. But the Seahawks, at least for one week, will show that they're not that fraudulent as they'll come out and get a victory here against Teddy Bridgewater and the New Orleans Saints. If this was Drew Brees, I think I still would pick the Seahawks because I just don't love the idea of Brees on the road in a hostile environment, just like I don't like the idea of Teddy Bridgewater on the road in a hostile environment either. I think the Seahawks win this game going away, and I think they win this game 27-16 on the field. As Russell Wilson will put up a good performance. Rams at the Browns. The Browns are getting 3D over under 47 and a half. Upset special. I love the Browns here. They win the game outright to go to 2 and 1. Everyone loves the Rams. I do you know what spot a year ago that everybody loved the Rams in primetime? In Chicago against the up and coming Bears. The Cleveland Browns are an up and coming team this year, a team that many people thought would make a big jump, including myself. I had them winning the AFC North. This is Baker Mayfield, Odell Beckham Jr., and Jarvis Landry, Nick Chubb. It's their time to shine in prime time, just like last week. And I think that this would be an even more significant win than the Jet win, only because the Jets stink and the Rams are your reigning NFC champions. So give me the Browns plus three. They'll win the game outright by a score of 26-23. So Baker Mayfield gets a signature Sunday night football home win. It's the Browns' first Sunday night football game in years. So this is, to me, setting up a Browns victory at home after they weren't so great against the Jets but got away with the win anyway simply because the Jets stink. But this will be their best performance of the season. I don't really love Jared Goff in primetime on the road, especially in what I expect to be a hostile environment in Cleveland. So give me the Browns, 26-23, upset special. Monday Night Football. Bears, Redskins, Bears laying 40, over under 41. I love the Bears here on the road laying the four. I'm going to hold my breath because Mitch Trubisky has stunk up the joint the first two games. They're favored in both games, and they didn't cover in either of them, although they're 1-1 one one on the season. I think they get the 2-1 and one on the season because of their defense. I think that Case Keenum regresses, as Case Keenum wasn't very good in that Cowboys game either. And that last touchdown that they had was in garbage time to make it 31-21. I think the Bears win this game 26-13. And you're going to be hearing people calling for Dwayne Haskins come next week. Just like the Giants went with Daniel Jones. I could see a world where winless Washington goes to Dwayne Haskins in week four against the team that Dwayne Haskins wanted to be drafted by the New York Football Giants. So an early bull prediction for week four. I'm going to say that... uh, Dwayne Haskins makes his uh, NFL debut next week in MetLife Stadium against the Giants, against Daniel Jones. So, Bears win 26-13, and they'll obviously cover the four points. The best bet of the day will be brought to you by DraftKings. Um, There's some interesting choices on the board, college football, baseball. I'm going to avoid USC because they're a dog. So, I am going to take La Tech against FIU as a big favorite, but it's obviously just a money line play here with the Bulldogs at minus 265. I am going to take Boise State on the money line, and I'll flip the baseball. I'm going to take... The Washington Nationals at the Marlins. The Rays at home against the Red Sox. And finally, the market's adjusted to Rick Porcello being bad. The Indians against the Phillies. Um, That game's on Fox. I'm going to take the Braves at home against the Giants and their opportunity to clinch. Astros at home against the Angels. Brewers at home against the Pirates. Twins at home against the Royals as they trim their magic number to clinch the division to five. I'm weary about putting the athletics on here because Mike Miner has been pretty good as an underdog this year, so I really don't want to play the athletics 
although Fires is in a prime bounce back spot here after a disastrous start against the Astros his last time out. So I'll pass on that one, but instead I'm going to go with the Dodgers at home against the Rockies with Clayton Kershaw on the mound. Although they're not really playing for much in the National League purposes, but they obviously want to win this game to possibly pass the Yankees and the Astros for home field advantage. Only wagering 14 cents here. Payout would be four dollars and sixteen cents, twenty-eight seventy-one odds. That's it for the podcast today. I'll be back on Monday recapping NFL, college, WNBA playoffs, baseball, and any other news that breaks in the world of sports. Hope you guys have a great day, everybody.